What is up guys, it's your boy Swalam here, back with another Wrath of the Lich King classic gold making video. So today I want to do an update for phase 3 on my own gold making progress, what my plans are, and how I'm going to be approaching phase 3 when it comes to gold making in Wrath of the Lich King classic. We're going to take a look at the items I currently have in my bags and my banks, which ones I'm selling right now, which ones I'm probably keeping until phase 4 or offloading a little bit, and also just talking about what I'm going to be doing in phase 3 when it comes to gold making. So first off, let me open my bag or open my Males. So what I'm personally doing is I'm selling a lot of the investments that I've been having that are somewhat profitable. So for example for me, titanium ores have been very profitable. Now right now they're on the auction house for 8 gold each, but I've been selling them all day today for 14 gold each. You just saw me loot some 20 stacks in the bags that I sold for 20 uh, for 14 gold each. And in my bags and my banks and my guild bank I have a lot more uh, titanium ores as well that I'm going to be uploading. We also have some eternal shadows right Right here. Now those are very cheap and I'm definitely going to be losing some gold on those ones, but that's fine. The majority of my current gold in liquid or in, in materials, in rough materials, are going to be coming from the titanium ores. So as you can see here in TSM, I have 8,500 titanium ores right now and I'm probably going to be aiming to sell these sometime throughout phase 3. Now titanium ores are a little bit interesting because a bunch of people have been investing into these so right now the supply is absolutely sky high. But what is going to be happening over time is that the current supply we have is going to be falling off because titanium ores will be prospected every single day and people will be equipping new epic gems every single day. So what I'm expecting to happen here is that right now we are seeing titanium ores being pretty high. Now they're going to go down in price. That, that's a given. They're probably be going to be going down to 4 gold on my server, maybe 3 gold as well. But once they crash to their ultimate bottom, uh, bottom value, I'm expecting them to start going up pretty gradually again, and they could be going back up to either the same price they're currently at right now with the launch of phase 3, or they could be even higher, because right now people have been stockpiling titanium ores for almost a full year. We've been playing Wrath of the Lich King Classic for 8 months now, and people have been stockpiling titanium ores for 8 months, and all of a sudden everyone is trying to offload what they have been stockpiling for those 8 months, so obviously right now the supply is absolutely insane so what I'm personally doing is I'm selling as much as I can right now while the prices are high but when they go down I'm either just going to hold on to what I have or keep buying more and sell them for example in phase 4 people need just as many epic gems when phase 4 comes out as they do when phase 3 comes out because when phase 4 comes out you're once again going to be re replacing all of your gear with brand new gear which means you need new gems Gems. So epic gems are going to be valuable one more time in phase 4 and even in phase 5, right? So epic gems always valuable, just keep that in mind. So if the titanium ores go down in price, don't fear too much. You can either hold on to what you have or do like me and just double down on your investment as long as you can sell them. The thing is I have 8,500 so I have to keep in mind that when phase 4 comes out that's probably going to be my last uh, chance of selling them while making decent profits, right? So I can sell some of them right now and sell the rest when phase 4 comes out. Now we do have some more investments, I for example have these eternal fires. These ones I think will be gradually going up in price because once again eternal fires people have been hoarding onto for 8 months and now suddenly they're used in for example alchemy transmute. I'm recording this one the day after phase 3 came out and to unlock the cardinal ruby transmute you need to do five daily transmute, which means that right now the demand for eternal fires haven't reached their peak just yet, and eternal fires, they will be like Everyone will be using one of them every single day to transmute their epic uh, epic gem, which means there's going to be a constant demand for this item. Right now, people are offloading a bunch of supply they have been hoarding, like even personally. I have 1,333 of this item, right? You have people with even more than me as well, so what I'm going to be doing here is that I'm going to be selling some of them, but I'm also going to be using some of them, because I have a bunch of alts in Wrath of the Lich King. I have about 15 level 8 these right now and most of them don't have professions so what I'm personally planning to do is buy a bunch of herbs from both vanilla and TBC 
and Wrath and start skilling up alchemy on all those characters. Right now, if I just go to the auction house, we can see the actual profitability behind crafting an epic gem. Like, let's take the um, Cardinal Ruby for example. We can buy an Eternal Fire right here, which costs me 22 gold. We also have the Scarlet Ruby that we have to buy for the Transmute, which is um, not that one, just regular Scarlet Ruby, please. Uh, regular Scarlet Ruby is probably about 50 gold. Let me just check that up really quick. I can actually use TSM for that one. Yeah, so Scarlet Rubies are selling for 42 gold, plus the 22 gold from the other item as well, the Eternal Fires. So 64 gold to craft a Cardinal Ruby. Now Cardinal Ruby, for example, we can check out that one and the cost of that one is almost 200 gold. Actually, some of them, most of them are above 200 gold as well. So you're making just about 150 gold profit every single day from this transmute, which means that if I set up one character, I make 4,500 gold every single month. Two characters is 9,000 gold. And if I just go to the auction house one more time, we can then go to the WoW token, which is 7.9k. So by having two alchemists right now, I can actually make more gold than one WoW token every single month, letting me play the game for free. So every single alchemy or alchemist character you have at max level doing the Cardinal Ruby Transmute, gaining 150 gold profit every single day, that's 4.5k per month. So if I, for example, have 15 level 80s, let's say I have alchemy on 10 of them, I can make 45,000 gold every single month by logging into 10 characters every single day, clicking one button 10 times, so doing 10, 10 transmutes. It's literally the freest gold you can ever imagine. Right now, scaling up alchemy based on the price of herbs from both vanilla and TBC, uh, well, Outlands and also Wrath, scaling up alchemy costs me about 6,000 in gold all the way which means that I'm going to be start making a profit after one and a half months so I can put in 60,000 gold right now into skilling up 10 alchemists I will make 45,000 gold the first month and the second month I will already start making 30,000 gold profit and every single month after that it's just pure profit every single time I don't think there's any other investments in the game that will give you the same profitability as that one so anyone with any leftover gold and leftover characters without professions, my one advice would probably be to pick up alchemy. I will have a further video coming out later down the line as well about why alchemy is so important and so good for gold making, especially right now, for those of you who are considering playing through the entirety of Wrath and even going into Kata. Skilling up alchemy, having some alchemy alts might just be the best investments you can ever do. So for me, I'm going to be skilling up a bunch of alchemy alt characters, I'm going to be taking a look at titanium ores, I'm going to be selling them right now, and I'm going to buy them again later down the line. You might also notice that I have a bunch of something called flame caps right now. Now these ones, they are actually use still usable inside raids. I don't really know why I don't still am on the WoW token site, but let me just... Uh, Go with the flame caps right here. So flame caps are selling for almost six gold per piece, which isn't really too much considering they used to be worth ten times that value. But if you check a TSM here, I bought almost six thousand of them for an average of two gold each. I've been selling quite a few of them as well. I have sold more than this, by the way. But the majority of the was the ones I sold, I sold at phase one without using TSM, so they were not recorded. But I sold some of them at almost a hundred gold each. But right now, if they're worth six gold each, I personally think flame caps could be going up in price in phase 4 when Ice Crown Citadel does come out. The thing is, flame caps are only used inside raiding anyway, and phase 3 is kind of a sleeper raid. Trial of the Crusader and Trial of the Grand Crusader is kind of sleeper mode. I think ma the majority of PvE players are currently sitting in what I personally call the ICC or phase 4 waiting room. But either way, flame caps I'm personally just going to be offloading if the price is high enough, but I'm probably going to be keeping most of them until phase 4 and then selling all of them in phase 4. Other than that, I also do have jewel crafting on this character, so I'm going to be looking at the prof profitability of Serenite Shuffling, and right now we also have Titanium Ore Shuffling. So Titanium Ores, if you can get these ones cheap enough, then even those might actually be worth uh, prospecting every now and then. It just depends on the price of both Titaniums and the gems on your survey. So we could just make a spreadsheet and see if that's profitable, like we have done for Serenite in the past, but right now Titaniums are 10 gold each on 
my server, which I think is a pretty decent price, considering I bought the majority of mine for uh, 4 gold each, so it's okay. Pretty much doubling, almost tripling my gold on that investment. But yeah, that just like a little bit of a update on what I'm doing for phase 3. I also have a bunch of golden pearls. Now those have been going down in price drastically lately. I don't really know why. I think they went up in price a lot because of joyous journeys. They are majorly used in enchanting heirlooms. Now a bunch of people did farm emblems to actually get heirlooms and then enchant their weapons. With for example healing power they're using healing power so golden pearls have been really useful in the past i think they're still going to be useful i just don't think um, i don't think people are buying them right now which is resulting in the price going down a lot as you can see though i've sold 325 of them in wrath for the average price of 114 gold so they are pretty good as well now it is also worth noting that if any of you currently have any leftover emblems, you can actually turn those emblems into literal gold. Well, you can first of all hand them in for frozen orbs, which could actually be worth it as well in some cases right here. So 10, uh, 10 emblems into 1 orb selling for currently on my server 50 gold. But the market value is almost 100 gold, so that one is pretty good. But you can buy the epic gems as well from these emblems. So for example, 20 emblems of, her of heroism can give you a cardinal ruby. This one on my server has a min buyout of 162 gold, with a region market value average of 259 gold. One thing to note here is that three of the gems are very expensive, so the King's Amber, Cardinal Ruby and Majestic Circuit. They cost you 20 emblems while the uh, uh, multicolored ones they cost you 10 so you could do some math here to find out the best ones to buy but the majority for the majority of you the best ones to buy will either be cardinal rubies or ametrin so you can see right here the price of ametrins and the price of cardinal rubies and they are probably going to be the best ones to buy so if you're doing a bunch of raids or a bunch, bunch of dungeons you will probably have an abundance of these emblems just sitting around in your bags and you can spend those to get some free gold from them. Literally a win-win for pretty much anyone sitting on those emblems. Once again you get a bunch of them just by doing raids, doing dungeons, heroics, whatever really. So if you don't want to spend them on heirlooms or gear for your character, you can spend them to get some gold. But yeah, that's just a little bit of an update for phase 3. Once again I'm going to be having a full video covering alchemy, why I personally think alchemy is great and what you can do right now to take advantage of that as well. For now though, if you enjoyed the video please consider dropping a like down below, leave a comment as well and something i haven't covered yet is that we have a huge sale on my wrath of the lich king classic gold making guide which you can find the link to in the description down below this is a full fledged gold making guide i have made for wrath classic covering gold farming how to make gold with professions um trading also doing investing and stuff like that plus you get access to a really awesome private gold making community for wrath classic as well where we have collectively like a bunch of us have made hundreds of thousands of gold and we're sharing our gold making strategies every single day so feel free to check, check that out through the link down below once again it's on a sale right now you will never find a sale like that so either way if you enjoyed the video leave a like leave a sub leave a comment and as always thank you so much for watching and i'll see you again very soon